Pastor Jason Cooley here with Brother Nate Marino again for another special report. And uh, we are talking about CCM icon, I guess you could call her, Amy Idol. Grant. Idol, yeah. Amy Grant that everybody just swoons over and thinks that she's the best thing in the world. The queen bee and of Christian the, rock. The queen bee of Christian rock, yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about her a little bit, and we want you to pray for us because we are going down to the Target Center here this weekend, Lord willing, and we are going to be preaching outside of that contemporary Christian music concert with her and uh, Michael, Michael w. w. Smith. Right, both of them are going to be there. And uh, we're going to be preaching outside to those fans that go in there that need the gospel that have never heard it probably or are not saved or lost and dead in their sins. And, uh, you some know, possibly some false converts that, there. Yep. Yep. Some false converts and every everything else going to be a part of that there. So, we, you know, we want to just do a little bit, of, a little bio, a little short bio on Amy Grant and who she really is. And uh, uh, by, I think this is Terry Watkins. Some of this information comes yep. from Terry Watkins. And uh, the queen bee of Christian rock is Amy Grant. Amy's song, Baby Baby, was unprecedented in gospel music history, topping the chart as the number one spot on Billboard magazine. Is the secular world turning to G- turning on to Jesus? No. Not hardly. People magazine asked that question in 1991, and they, says, they say of Amy's video, Baby Baby, there's saintly Amy cuddling some hunky guy crooning baby baby into his ear and looking pretty sleek and sinful wow after all confess amy after all amy confesses listen to what she says pay attention i'm trying to look sexy to sell a record wow rolling stones june 6 1985 man she's been around a long time yeah i'm trying to look sexy to sell a record wow how old is she now christians wake up you hear what this supposedly Christian woman just said to you? Yeah. That's wicked. The Bible said, yeah, it is wicked. It's absolutely wicked. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 22, flee also youthful lusts. But Amy says, quote, petting happens. Petting? You know what she means by that? Yeah, Teenagers. fondling a woman. Or fondling a man. Pet- petting happens as a teenager. When I gave part of me to someone, I knew I was just going to flirt. Have a little fun. Have a little fun. Is, hey, isn't that what somebody said about uh, yeah. it's not good for I don't a man want to it. touch a woman? I'm not going to mention his name. <laughs> it's not good for a man to touch a woman. Yeah. And he, he, said he, said that, all, <laughs> he said it didn't say it was a sin. He just said it wasn't good. It's okay to have a little bit of fun. It's okay to have a little fun. <laughs> yeah. You sound like Amy Grant. It's okay. Have a little fun. That is horrible. Touching and petting, that doesn't lead to anything, you know. It doesn't lead to fornication. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I know one thing. You can't fornicate if you don't touch, that's for sure. I'm sorry, but, yeah, anyways, you're gay yeah. if you don't think that. If yeah. you think that you can touch a, a girl, especially if you're two teenagers with raging hormones. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't lead to anything. You're an idiot. That's right. Amy says in Ladies Home Journal, December 1985, I have a healthy sense of right and wrong. But sometimes, for example, using foul exclamation point words among friends can be good for a laugh. Oh, ha, ha, ha. it can be so funny when I curse. Um, Wicked no. lady. The Bible says, let no filthy communication proceed out of your mouth. Amy says, why isolate yourself? Your life isolates you enough. I'm isolated when I walk into a room and somebody says, this, this quote blows me away. She's a Christian and nobody offers me a joint and all the cocaine disappears. Are you serious? Seriously. She feels isolated when she comes into the room and all the people Coke goes say, away. hides the weed. Hide the, the Coke and the weed. Hide, Amy's hide here. Hide the Coke and the weed. Well, first of all, why go into a party where there's coke and weed in the first place? Second of all, you're mad that they're hiding the drugs? So CCM you parties? You feel isolated? So CCM artists no. hang out with coke? Of course and, not. That would never happen. Hang out with coke heads and, and, and no, weed heads? No, they wouldn't do that. Wow. Come on. Her husband, Gary Chapman, confessed in People magazine in July 1991 of a six-year cocaine and marijuana Whoa! addiction. Whoa! Yeah. A Amy. six-year cocaine and marijuana addiction. Her husband, oh, but of course her husband would do it, but she wouldn't do no, it. No, she wouldn't do that. Amy also says, I remember years ago, the first time I smelled anybody smoking a joint at a concert, I was thrilled. I was thrilled. It, you meant, were, what? it meant to me that obviously this person is not affected by the church peer pressure. What? <laughs> 
Wow. What? Where are we living in the Twilight Zone? I mean, this yeah, is this is Christian, right? This is Christian Amy Bob, here. So this is from Bob Millard, Amy Grant. Yeah, Bob Millard, yeah. Page 30, 1986. Okay, Amy's video. <laughs> On Amy's video, that's what's love. That's what love is for. Amy is dressed in a red robe used in witchcraft rituals. Yeah, Flashing, if you look at the robe, it, uh, it's pretty crazy. We'll put the pictures in maybe. Flashing the on the palms of her hands, a six-pointed star. Yeah, yeah, they show it. A hexagram. Hexagram. Sean Sellers, a former Satanist on death row for sacrificing three people to Satan, says in his book, Web of Darkness, the hexagram is said by some to be the most powerful and evil sign in Satanism and all the occult world. It wasn't just him. Bill Shiblin said the same thing and others, that the hexagram is a, yep. one of the most powerful symbols in witchcraft. The hexagram is used mainly in witchcraft to summon demons from the underworld. The word hex, which means to place, place a curse, a curse yep. on someone, originated from this sign. Yep, that's true. And the primary point of contact in the transmission of spirits is, is the, the hand. hand. Yep, got that right there. Oh, I think Amy knows what she's doing. She's a pretty high-level witch, yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. Amy's album, House of Love. House of Love. House of Love. Includes the environmental Mother Earth song, Big Yellow Taxi, by, by New who? Age Priestess. By who? Joni Mitchell. Aaron didn't know that. Tells of Joni Mitchell's intimate relationship. No, Aaron with knows the, who Joni Mitchell is. I know he does. With a muse, a demon spirit named Art. Art? Okay, so Joni... Mitchell tells of her intimate relationship with a muse. Yeah, demon spirit, yep. Named Art. Yeah, named Art. Joni says, I feel like I'm married to this guy named Art. I'm responsible to my art above all else. Okay. Some of the words to the big yellow taxi, they paved paradise a, and put up a parking this. lot. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Okay. Wow. How different from the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Of course. What's the Bible and Jesus got to do with Christian rock? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Okay, so she uh, she covered a song by Joni Mitchell, the New yeah. Ager, secular rock artist. Makes a lot of sense. Hey, remember Be Not Conformed to This World? Yeah. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12. I think yeah. they ripped that out of their CCM Bible. Yep. No, it must be an NIV. Amy's latest album, Behind the Eyes, goes even further to ex exorcise any Christian influence. This is older, but Christianity Today says in 1997. In an article entitled, Where's the Gospel? Uh, writes this. Amy Grant's latest album has thrown the contemporary Christian music industry into a first-rate identity crisis. Grant's newest release, Behind the Eyes, comes as no surprise given the course of her career since Unguarded. In 1985, the first of her albums to be distributed jointly by CCM label Murr in the evangelical market and the A&M in the mainstream market. Previous crossover projects, however, had made at least some mention of God or Jesus. The complete absence of explicit, explicitly Christian lyrical content on Behind the Eyes has renewed a debate in the CCM industry about what constitutes Christian music. Complete absence of Christian lyrical content. Well, and this is this again. She, see, she why we see this again and again and again. Well, why see, aren't they talking about Jesus if they're supposedly Christian? Her and her and Michael W. Smith paved the way for the Toby Max and the other people to yeah. come on and, and to have yep. crossover albums. Yep, that had nothing to do with the Lord. And you got you know people. Yeah, so CCM has gotten so far off the track. Amy admits in Christianity Today that she doesn't even know what Christian music is. I don't know if Behind the Eye is a Christian record. Being able to label it Christian or non-Christian is not the point for see, me. See, we see all these artists today like Lecrae and all these guys, and they're like, I don't want to be labeled a Christian artist because that's limiting and all this garbage. You know. Well, what are you doing it for? Right. Money. Exactly. That's for. Yeah, exactly. CCM is in such a worldly, compromising, money-making, confusing mess, its number one star does not even know if her album is Christian. Christian is a Christian is a disciple of Christ. Right. If it's not about the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not Christian. A music buyer for religious stores mentioned in Christianity Today truthfully says of Behind the Eyes, it's not a Christian album. A Christian album a Christian album should be clear on the person of Christ, and these lyrics are not. No, they're not. You know? 
All right. It's part of the game. See, it's been going on. This gives you a little history shot of what really happened and how this whole thing Yeah, this is how place. we got here. This, this is how we are. This is how CCM is where it, what it is today and where it is today. Yeah. This is going on in the, like 80, this. in the 80s and 90s. Way yeah. back in the 80s and people were when she was the darling of the Christian world. Yep. Uh, and she was doing hey, all you know, this stuff. Just before, before I uh, forget, you know, there's an interview with famous pop star Katy Perry. Mm-hmm. And she said when she was younger, she was raised Christian in a Christian household. I don't know how Christian their father was, but yeah, he's probably a wicked man. But anyway, she said, I wanted to be the next Amy Grant. That's what she said. And then she said, but then I sold my soul to the devil. That's what she says in the interview. Wow. Well, but so she, did, but well, she, so said did she Amy. looked up to Amy Grant. Right, exactly. <laughs> but well, then so, look how Katy Perry turned out and started singing songs. I kissed a girl and I liked it. Right. So. All came from back here at Amy Grant's She was influenced by Amy Grant. Yeah, great. Christianity Today makes a keen observation as it emphasizes that incredibly some songs by secular performers are more Christian than CCM's. Wow. Than CCM's. That's right. Some of them are more. Some of them talk about God and Jesus more. More than the CCM artists. Yeah, yeah. Country music singers talk about Jesus all the time in their songs. Um I did a report on country yeah, music that. a while back. It's like the blue jean baby Jesus saved me. Yeah, be yeah. Be the bada boo. And the other one was <laughs> one hell of an amen. Remember that one? Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. that's that's like blasphemous. It is blasphemous, of course it is. But they talk more about Bible terms than Amy does. Yeah. Christianity Today asked the following enlightening question in reference to secular: Mary Chapin Carpenter's "I Am a Town." If Carpenter can sing, I'm a Baptist like my daddy, Jesus knows my name, why does Grant have to be discreet about her faith? Right. Very good question. Why does CCM have to be so discreet about their faith? Why does a supposedly Christian not want to sing about the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, we know why, because they're just making money. None of them are saved. They're no more saved than the devil is. Okay, let's get let's be honest. Let's just be real here. That's that's exactly the truth of it. Now it's we're not Protestants money. here. We're Baptists. But Martin Luther gave made a good point here. German reformer and musician Martin Luther puts it bluntly: Whoever does not want to song and speak of it shows that he does not believe it. Uh oh. According to Luther, they are not saved. If you don't want to sing about Jesus. There's a problem. Because you ain't got him. That's why. That's right. We should praise God with both word and music, namely by proclaiming the word of God through music. He who believes earnestly cannot be quiet about it. That's right. Amen. But he must gladly and willingly sing and speak about it so that others may come to hear it. How can you not praise the Lord who saved you? How can you hide that? Because they're not saved. And whosoever does not want to to song and speak of it shows they don't believe it. Same quote. Yeah, same quote. Because of Grant's... Obvious unchristian lyrics. Christianity Today writes, The Christian music industry has been unsure how to characterize categorize, categorize Grant's, Grant's, latest offering. Grant's latest offering. So much so, in fact, that the GMA and Christian Music Trade Association, CMTA, initiated a reevaluation of existing guidelines of GMA Dove Award eligibility and sales chart placement. They didn't even know how to categorize it. You know, they, I don't know where to put this. Not to dare break their compromising worldly commercial track record, GMA did allow grants behind the eyes in the Dove Awards, and presto, behind the eyes was the 1998 Dove Awards Pop Contemporary Album of the Year. Oh, okay, great. Back in the day, huh? Stan Moser, former head of Word Records, the man responsible for signing Amy Grant and CEO of Star Song Records, was one of the pioneers and most important executives in CCM. And after 26 years in CCM in November of 1995, walked, walked away. away from CCM in an article in Christianity Today titled, titled, We Have Created a Monster. Wow. About CCM. Mr. Moser freely admits. So this is the, so- this is the guy. He said we created a monster. Who uh, signed Amy Grant. Mm-hmm. What did he say? He says, but to be candid, I looked at the majority of the music I hear today and think it's virtually meaningless. Virtually meaningless. That's because it is. Yep. It's not Christian. Mr. Moser goes on to make this eye-opening statement. Hit I it. would I would probably be more inclined to call the industry commercial Christian music rather than contemporary Christian yep. music. Fake, phony, prepackaged corporate garbage. Yep. Shoved down your throat too, so you can sell a product. Sounds about right, doesn't it? CCM artist Michael Card admits that much of CCM is not Christian. 
He says this. He sums it up right here. Here he goes. The lyrics of a good number of the songs don't betray anything specifically Christian. Don't. Right. They may have some moral message, but not a lot of big songs are identifiably Christian. What happens to the message when we start getting the music to as many people as possible? There is an essential part of the gospel that not that's not ever going to sell. Right. The gospel is good news, but it is also bad news. You are a sinner and you are hopeless. How is a multi-million dollar record company going to take that? They're not. That's part of the message too, and that's and if it if that's taken out and it frequently is in Christian music, it ceases to be the gospel. Ceases to be the gospel. That's right. You've gutted it. And you have to gut it or else you couldn't sell records. It's not possible. That's how it works. The world hates Christ. The Bible says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. That's right. They're not going to buy your record if you're preaching the cross of Christ. That's right. Michael Card makes his alarming statement about CCM. He says, the direction and value system are getting worse faster than any of us can imagine. Yep, and that was back in 96. Yeah, now you but, can see uh, it. But it's even worse today. Ugh. Now you got things like Hillsong, and they promote homosexuality and all this other garbage. Yeah, they well, endorse yeah. it. Yeah, again, go you know, listen to that. Jars uh, of Clay, which yep. we call Jars of Gay, because one of the guys came out as gay. Right. You know, it's just... It's insane now. You can go listen to that. Uh, we talked about the homosexual spirit in CCM. There's a I think, in one of those. ton of homosexuals yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, that's wicked. That's what I said. Yeah, and then Kirk Franklin pushing that stuff. Yeah, they're wicked. You know, this and is then, why we're uh, going to preach there. Then there's the foundation of that with Lonnie Frisbee. Oh, yeah. And Chuck Smith. That Lonnie Frisbee was a homosexual witch. Yep. Found, you know, helping to found Jesus Rock, all that stuff. So. Oh, yeah. It's all a bunch of wickedness. Yeah, it's pretty deep. It goes pretty. It goes pretty back far back in history, and and for the for a lot of the history that you can listen to some of the CCM sermons that we preach for more. This is just a little snippet. We want you to pray for us. So don't hide your go. drugs around Amy Grant. She might get mad. Yeah, yeah. Amy wants you to be a full on drug feel, addict. She so. doesn't want to feel isolated. Yep. She doesn't want you to. She doesn't want you to think that she's a Christian. And yeah. don't worry, Amy. I don't think you are. Yeah, we don't. So, Sorry. Uh, for Brother Dave Marino, it's Pastor Jason Cooley for Sound the Battle Cry, a radio ministry of Old Pass Baptist Church in Northfield, Minnesota.